King Midas of Phrygia is a legendary figure in Greek mythology. His place in Greek literature and culture is curious. On one hand, he is honored and famous for being a man of legendary wealth. On the other hand, he is often ridiculed and presented as an arrogant character. The most popular myth about Midas is the one in which the king gains the Midas touch, the infamous ability to turn everything he touches into gold with disastrous consequences. In another story, he is given the ears of a donkey as punishment for his arrogance. In this video, we are going to know his story. Midas was a mythical king of Phrygia and the son of Gordias and the goddess Sibylle. According to legend, Midas was the richest man of his time and famous for the story in which he obtained the Midas touch, the ability to turn everything he touched into gold. According to Pausanias, he founded the city of Ankara, the capital of present-day Turkey. Furthermore, in Greek art, he is often depicted with the ears of a fawn or donkey. Some ancient authors claim that he committed suicide by drinking the blood of an ox, while Aristotle writes that he starved to death, unable to eat due to his golden touch. According to Herodotus, Midas was the first foreign king to send offerings to the sanctuary of Apollo at Delphi. There is also a tomb in the city of Gordium called the Tomb of Meda, but it is doubtful that it actually belonged to a king named Midas. The most popular Midas story is the one in which the king was cursed with the golden touch. Interestingly, the story implies another rustic god, Silenus, the foster father and mentor of Dionysus. The story varies depending on the source, but more or less goes along the following lines. Silenus was a god known for drinking wine until he passed out. He loved to drink, dance, sing, and sleep. According to Ovid's version of the story, on one of his journeys with Dionysus, Silenus strayed from the god of wine and was captured by Midas's men, who brought him before the king. In another version of the story, Midas specifically set out to lure Silenus to his palace, either by filling a spring with wine or by making a wine fountain. Silenus was successfully lured and captured by Midas as the god fell asleep. In any case, King Midas treated Silenus as the guest of honor. In addition, Midas was already initiated into the mystical rites of Dionysus and had met Silenus before. It is even said that they were old friends. It is not surprising then that, to please him, Midas threw a great party that lasted 11 days. Once the party was over, Midas helped Silenus return to Dionysus, who was extremely worried about his favorite companion. To show his gratitude to Midas for treating Silenus well, Dionysus offered the king a wish. Midas could have asked for whatever he wanted. However, the king, blinded by his love for money, asked that everything he touched turn into gold. Dionysio granted the wish, even though he knew it would lead to nothing good. As Midas happily walked away with his new ability, Dionysus was saddened because he knew the misfortunes that would befall the king. Midas immediately began to test the new power of him. At first, he was hesitant. He snapped a twig from an oak tree, and to his own surprise, the twig turned golden. He then picked up a stone, and it also turned to gold. Next was a clod, some grains, wheat, and some apples. Everything turned to gold. When he returned to his palace, Midas discovered that he was leaving golden door handles behind him. Every time he opened a door, it turned to gold. The first problem appeared when he tried to wash his hands and found that the water turned into a golden shower. However, the king still kept his optimism and ordered food from him. His servants prepared the table, but the king could not eat. Bread, meat, wine, and even water turned to gold as soon as they came in contact with his hands or his mouth. He even inadvertently turned one of his daughters into a golden statue. The golden blessing had turned into a golden curse as Midas began to suffer from hunger and thirst. He now prayed to Dionysus asking him to reverse the curse. Dionysus felt sorry for the king and helped him. He told her to travel to the stream that runs by the great city of Sardis and follow its waters until she found its source. Then, he would immerse his head and body in the snow foam where the spring gushes from the mountain, and thus the curse would disappear. King Midas acted accordingly and bathed in the waters of the river. The river filled with gold when the curse was lifted. Midas was finally free. The river where Midas washed away the curse was the Pactolus River. With this myth, the Greeks explained the rich gold reserves of the river. In another story, King Midas abandoned his kingdom and wealth after the curse of his golden touch was lifted to become a follower of the god Pan, god of shepherds and flocks in Greek mythology. Together they traveled until they reached Mount Timolus. There, Pan played his music for the forest nymphs, 
and proclaimed his superiority over Apollo's music. The news soon reached Apollo, and he challenged Pan to a musical contest with Mount Timolus as the judge. Pan played some rustic sounds on his aulos, bagpipe, followed by the sound of Apollo's lyre. It was very clear to Timolus that Apollo's music was better than Pan's. Everyone in the crowd agreed, all except the devoted follower of Pan, King Midas. Midas openly questioned Timolus's judgment. However, a mortal who judges a god is arrogant and cannot be accepted. Apollo decided to punish the mortal by replacing the human ears that had deceived him with donkey ears. Midas was ashamed of his ears, so he hid them under a purple turban. He was careful not to let anyone know his secret, but there was one man who did, Midas's barber. Of course, Midas had made the man swear to secrecy. In addition, the hairdresser himself did not want to betray the secret. However, he felt that the secret was too much to bear. He had to tell someone, or at least say it out loud. So he went to the forest, he dug a hole and whispered in the hollow ground, Midas has donkey ears. He then buried the whisper and left. From the hole grew a grove of trees that finally told the secret to a southerly wind that carried the words to a nearby city. Before long, everyone knew that Midas had donkey ears. The moral of the King Midas story is that greed and excessive desire for wealth and power can lead to disastrous consequences, and that if you piss off Apollo, you will grow donkey ears. You have more Greek stories and mythologies on the channel, so come and take a look, subscribe, comment, and share this video. It's a great help to me. I'll wait for you in next week's video.